welcome to this channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the top 10 facts about the human body. Health professionals, physiologists, anatomists, and artists all study the human body in order to better understand it and use it in their work. Before continuing this video, like and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Number 10. The human body is made up of four limbs, two arms and two legs, a head and a neck, all of which are connected to the torso by spinal cord. Fat, muscles, connective tissues, organs and other structures surround and support a strong skeleton composed of bone and cartilage. The shape of body is determined by this skeleton. With the spine, which is located on one end of the skeleton, it contains the flexible vertebral column, which surrounds the spinal cord, which is a collection of nerve fiber connections that connects your brain to the other parts of your body. Nerves are the conduits that connect the spinal cord and brain to the rest of the human body. All of the major bones, muscles, and nerves in the body have been named, with the exception of the anatomical variations such as uh, sesamite bones and accessory muscles, which are not included. Number 9. Human Physiology is the study of how the human body works and how it can be improved. This includes the mechanical, physical, bioelectrical, and biochemical functions of the healthy humans, as well as the mechanical, physical, bioelectrical, and biochemical functions of the organs and cells that make up those organs. The human body is made up of many interconnected organ systems that communicate with another. These factors work together to maintain homeostasis, which is the state of being in which the body has safe levels of substances such as sugar and oxygen in the blood. Each system contributes to the maintenance of homeostasis in its own system, in other systems and throughout the entire body. Some combined systems are referred to as joint names by their developers, for example, the neuroendocrine system, which is comprised of the nervous system and the endocrine system works in concert. Number 8. The process of growing and maturing the human body is referred to as development. The process begins with fertilization, which occurs when a female's egg is released from her ovary and is penetrated by a male sperm. The egg then lodges into the uterus, where it develops into an embryo and later a fetus until it's born. Growth and development occur after birth and include both physical and psychological development which are influenced by genetic, hormone, environmental, and other factors. Growth and development occur after birth and include both physical and psychological development. A person's development and growth continues throughout his or her life, from childhood to adolescence to adulthood and on to old age, and are collectively referred to as the process of aging. Number 7. Medical students and residents gain an understanding of how the human body through illustrations, models, and demonstrations. Aside from theoretical knowledge, medical and dental students gain hands-on experience such as through dissection of the cadavers, human anatomy, physiology, and biochemistry are all fundamental medical sciences that are taught to medical students during their first year of medical school in most of the cases. Number 6. The human body is made up of various elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, calcium, and phosphorus, among others. These elements can be found in trillions of cells and non-cellular components throughout the body structure. The average adult male body is approximately 60% of water, with a total water content of approximately 42 liters. This is composed of approximately 19 liters of extracellular fluid, which includes approximately 3.2 liters of blood plasma and approximately 8.4 liters of interstitial fluid as well as approximately 23 liters of fluid contained within cells. The content, acidity, and composition of the water within and outside the cells are all carefully monitored and maintained at all times. Outside of the cells, sodium and chloride 
are the most abundant electrolytes in body water, whereas potassium and other phosphates are the most abundant electrolytes within the cells. Number 5. The body is made up of a variety of different types of tissues, which are defined as cells that perform a specialized function. Histology is the study of tissues and it is frequently carried out with the aid of a microscope. The human body is made up of four different types of tissues. These include epithelial cells, connective tissues, nerve tissues, and muscle tissue. Those cells that line the surface of the body that are exposed to the outside world, such as the skin or the gastrointestinal tract, or that line internal cavities, come in a variety of shapes and sizes, from single layers of flat cells to cells with small beating hair like cilia in the lungs to column-like cells that line the stomach. Endothelial cells or cells that line internal cavities, such as blood vessels and glands, and help to keep the body moist. Lining cells are responsible for regulating what can and cannot pass through them, protecting internal structures and acting as sensory receptors. Number 4. The heart is a muscular organ that's located in the thoracic cavity between the lungs and slightly to the left of the center of the chest. The heart is surrounded by pericardium, which holds it in place in the mediastinum and protects it from blunt trauma and infection, as well as aiding in the lubrication of the heart's movement through the circulation of the pericardial fluid. In order for oxygen, nutrients, waste, hormones, and white blood cells to be carried around the body by the heart, the heart must pump the blood around the body. The heart is made up of two chambers called atriums and two chambers called ventricles. During ventricular systole, the atrium's primary function is to maintain uninterrupted venous blood flow to the heart's muscle. During arterial systole, this allows enough blood to flow into the ventricles to keep them functioning properly. The absence of the atrium would result in a 75% reduction in cardiac output. The right ventricle pumps blood to the lungs and left ventricle pumps blood to the rest of the body. The purpose of the ventricle is to pump blood to the lungs and to the rest of the body. Number 3. Located posterior to the inferior middle part of the right lobe of the liver. The gallbladder is a hollow pear-shaped organ with a bile duct in its center. Its shape and size are highly variable. Before bile is released into the small intestine via the common bile duct to aid in the digestion of fats, it is stored in the gallbladder. The bile is transported from the liver to this organ by way of cystic duct, which connects with the common hepatic duct to form the common bile duct. Typically, the gallbladder receives its blood supply from the right hepatic artery, which emerges from the right hepatic artery in the majority of the people. Inflammation of the gallbladder or biliary tract, which results in the formation of one or more stones. Number 2. The circulatory system is made up of the heart and blood vessels, among other things, arteries, veins, and capillaries. This transport system is powered by the heart and transports oxygen, fuel nutrients, waste products, immune cells, and signaling molecules, hormones, from one part of the body to another through the circulation of the blood. There are two types of blood circulation circuits in the human body. The pulmonary circuit, which pumps blood to the lungs in order to receive oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide, and the systematic circuit, which transports blood away from the heart to the rest of the body to receive oxygen and eliminate carbon dioxide. The blood is a fluid that transports cells throughout the body, including those that move from tissue to the blood vessels and back again, as well as cells from the spleen and bone marrow, among other things. Number 1. The endocrine system is comprised of the principal endocrine glands which are the pituitary, thyroid, adrenals, pancreas, parathyroid, and gonades, but nearly all organs and tissues also produce specific endocrine hormones, including the brain, heart, and lungs. 
The endocrine hormones act as messengers, transmitting information from one body system to another about a wide range of conditions and resulting in a wide range of changes in function in the process. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you